what's up y'all welcome to another episode get right into it so i received a comment and someone said man i thought the shoe was the same as the hole that's not the case the shoe is a totally different animal and that's why i do this show to explain these things to the people who may not know and certainly need to know the hole they have in every facility they have the hole right there in the yard in case there's a riot in case there's assault on staff they need somewhere to put you right away they don't want to have to transfer you somewhere so they put you right there in the hole on that's in juvenile hall why they all have a hole right there on institutional grounds the shoe however is totally different they only have three shoe programs in california they have a shoe program in Tehachapi, in Corcoran, and in Pelican Bay. The shoe program is where Charles Manson did over 40 years, uh, where the Menendez brothers did their time, or are still doing their time in the shoe. And when you are a so-called violent human being, I don't like to say inmates or, or, or convict because I'm just a human being. And those people in there are human beings as well. And I always have disallowed anyone to divest me of my humanity, regardless of my situation. And so the human beings in there, <clears throat> normally, supposedly, they are violent, they are unruly. If you are a big shot caller, they put you in a shoe. If you have too much power, they put you in a shoe. If you assault staff, et cetera, they will put you in the shoe program. Now, if you just get it like a six month shoe, sometimes you can serve that right in the hole because like I got a 48 month shoe, but I did 38 months. So you don't have to do the whole shoe term. So if you got a six month shoe, normally they don't want to transfer you to a shoe program. When I was in high desert, people were deliberately trying to catch shoes or catching shoes trying to transfer from High Desert. High Desert caught on and said, you're going to do your shoe term right here in the hole. But the shoe is very militant. The shoe is very structured. The brothers in the shoe, we all, we speak Swahili. We have to learn Swahili. We speak Swahili on the tier. We speak Swahili on the yard. We speak Swahili at the kites. The reason for this, of course, is because everyone in there has their own language. And we don't want anyone to know what we're discussing. And so we have a language of our own as well. And you have to learn this. Wake up call in the shoe is 3.30 a.m. You will be up at 3.30 a.m. You will roll your mattress up. You will be involved in a roll call. Now, when I got to Tehachapi shoe, after doing it 17 months in the hall. Some, well, some shoes, they have a group yard. Tehachapi was one of them, where they have maybe 15 human beings on the yard. Corcoran shoe, when I transferred there, is cages. There's no open yard, it's in a cage. So you may think that you're safe. Not so. And so Tehachapi shoe, they do have the group yard. I was there with, uh, with baby Tookie or little Tookie, big Tookie's son. I think he's baby Tookie from the PJs. We was there on the yard together. Me, him, and some of the other people that got caught up in that situation with me there in high desert. The shoe, when I got there, I said, okay, I'm gonna have to be strong to survive this because the shoe is gonna expose you for either being a strong man are a weak man. And whatever you do in the shoe is gonna follow you back to the main line. So you have to program and you have to be structured and you have to be serious. And as I said before, an alivings happen in the shoe program as well. I'll get into that next. That happened when I got to Corcoran shoe. Corcoran shoe is different from Tehachapi shoe in many ways. But one of the ways, as I said, is that in Tehachapi Shoe, you have group yard. In Corcoran, you have yard in the cages. Just you 
in your cell. The other homies are right there. Your other comrades are right there. Y'all working out. One gets the hard count. One gets the soft count. Um, everyone does burpees. Burpees only. Many people can do a thousand burpees in one hour. They do a hundred burpees in six minutes. I never got to that point. They call them burpee monsters. These are people who have been in the shoe for years, most of them. Now, they were putting the shot callers back in the shoe for 10 to 15 years. We went on hunger strikes and et cetera to overturn that, to make it where even if you're a shot caller, you do however much time you need to do in the shoe, five, six months, a year, two years, and then you come out to the main line like everyone else. Now, as I said, they want people in the shoe to be recognized as torture victims. Why? Well, because the shoe is indeed torture. You're in a cell 24 hours a day. You do get yard two, perhaps three times a week for an hour or two where you work out. Other than that, you're going to be in your cell all day, every day. You're cuffed up everywhere you go. You're searched before you leave your cell, no matter where you're going. When you go to the shower, you'll be cuffed up with an escort. When you go to the law library, you'll be cuffed up with an escort. When you go to the yard, you're going to get searched first, and then you're going to get cuffed up, and you're going to go to the yard. And when you return from the yard, you're going to be cuffed up with an escort. It's tedious. It's laborious. And you have to be strong in the same way that you have to be strong on the street to get through any trial and tribulation. You just have to believe in yourself. When I was in the shoe, I got up every morning at 3.30 a.m. I did 100 burpees. I was in a cell by myself. And then I, and then I worked, and then I bird bathed. I washed, I cleaned myself. And so by the time five o'clock came, 5 a.m., I'd already got my workout in, I'd already washed up, and I was reading and waiting on breakfast. Now, when I got to Tehachapi Shoe, same thing that happened in the county jail just the last time I was there. But the penitentiary is different. But I don't care. When I got there, the Southsiders were saying their roll call in the morning, 3.30 in the morning. Buenos dias, Rasa. Buenos dias. You know, and then I noticed after two or three days that the woods was going second. Wood call. What's up, Wood Pal? Wake up, Wood Pal. Yes, sir, on deck. And then the blacks go. I said, man, this ain't, this ain't, man, what is this? What is this? Same thing happened when I was in the county jail. I think I was in 2400. And the Southsiders did their roll call. I got there that, that, that night. The Southsiders did their roll call. And then the Woods did their roll call next. And then the blacks get on there with some old weak ass shit. And I, to and I came out my cell that morning. And I, I told one black what, what, I, what I was about to go do. I didn't even want to talk to the rest of them dudes. I said, man, y'all weak. I went straight to the white boy. And I told him, listen, we ain't never going at the y'all on the roll call. The Southsiders do their roll call. And then we're going to do our roll call. And then y'all can do y'all roll call. We're not going after y'all, bro. That's not how this is going to work. Ever. And then I went and told the Southsiders. Y'all can go first on y'all roll call one day. And then we're going to go first the next morning. And that's just going to be a, If it's a problem, it is what it is. We're we not waiting at the, end, at, at, at the end of the line, at the back of the bus, for nobody. Those days are over. So anyhow... When I got to Tehachapi Shoe, it was the same thing. The Serenios would do their roll call in the morning, 3.30 a.m., and then here come the woods yelling out the door. And the blacks just sitting there just, just waiting for their turn to speak to, to, to speak to our people. So I told them, no, that's not going to work. Same thing. Southsiders, y'all can go first one morning and then we gonna go after that we gonna go first the next morning and and and, and the whites with all due respect y'all gonna have to go after us every time that's just how it's gonna be and so when i got to the shoe and i implemented that 
I had a target on my back. Even some blacks accused me of coming there and starting trouble. Not the first time that's happened to me in my life, but I want my people to be strong and structured. And so the SHU program is very militant. It's very uh, lonesome. It's very stringent with the rules and the structure. And you would think that because you're kept away from everyone that you wouldn't have so many rules and so much structure. But that's not the case. There are rules, protocols, and structure that you must abide by. You can't escape it. Nowhere in the penal system, including the shoe program. The only escape is freedom. That's the only escape. And so when I got to Corcoran Shoe from Tehachapi, well, first, let me say that when I was in Tehachapi Shoe, so one of the people that, it was nine of us, as I said, this is all, Tehachapi Shoe is over what happened in High Desert. They came and got us, put us on a lie detector test, took us to the hole for 17 months. Now we're we in the shoe. So, one of the people that was in there with me, uh, one of the one of the nine, or one of the other eight, well, he kept getting into it to see on one. She kept hitting herself. This this also happened in high desert. I'm gonna I'm gonna get into that. I haven't even gotten to high desert yet, man. So she kept hitting herself and messing with him. And he told her, "Leave me alone. I don't bother anybody." He had life, but she didn't listen. And she kept on aggravating him deliberately. And then one day we went to the yard. We did our workout. Normally we would have two people at the front running the workout. And the rest of us would be in the back. As I said, 15 people maybe total, 12, 13 people. Two people up front, 10, 11, 12, 13 people in the back. And we all doing our workout in Swahili. The numbers in Swahili. Mojan, Billy, Tatu, Ene, Tano, Sita, Saba, Nane, Tisa, Kumi. And the, the two in the, at, the, at the head would do their routine, do their count, do their number, and then they come back on us that's back here in the back. And we go in sequence, the ones in the back. And so this one day, the comrade who was with us, he was he was one of the ones running the workout that day. Sometimes we would switch off on who runs the workout. And the CO lady, she called him off the yard into the little rotunda. She cuffed him up. She had just went in his cell and claimed that she had found some in his cell while we were out here in the yard. She's still messing with him. She ain't went in nobody else's cell, but she went in his cell. And then calling the men off the yard saying, I just found some of your cell. That's contraband. You need to go back to your cell. So he said, okay. And he went back to his cell. And when she let him back out the next day for yard, he, she was escorting him with someone else. And I'm sitting there, I'm looking out the door because I already knew what was about to go down. And he slipped out of his handcuffs because sometimes people know how to do these things. He slipped out of his cuffs, and back there, you also have weapons, of course. And he slipped out of his cuffs and brought the brought a blade out of his mouth. As soon as he took his right hand out of his cuff, took the blade out of his mouth, and 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 went in on her. I mean, oh it was oh man, it was bad. I said, oh my God. And the tower had the, had, had the mini, had Mama Mini on him, and I thought he was going to down my boy, but he didn't because he got right down after that. But if he just, just lifted his hand one more time, for sure he was going to gun him down because he just had did what he did to a CO and to a CO lady. They ran in there. They beat him badly. They beat him badly. We banging on the doors. We yelling at the door saying, if y'all keep beating him, it's going up with us and y'all. If y'all if y'all if y'all hitting one more time, it's it, it's it's on then. Every time we come out to sell song, you know what I'm saying? Now we know what he just did, so we understand. But if y'all 
keep going overboard, we will respond. And they stopped, they cupped him up, and they took him out. The shoe was very vicious. And you have to be strong to survive. And sometimes you're by yourself, you're alone. You have nobody. You have to dig deep and find your manhood and find your strength. Encourage yourself, recite affirmations, and keep yourself going. It's the same thing on the street. When people give up on you, that's okay. Being defeated is often a temporary condition. It's the giving up that makes the condition permanent. When you feel defeated, when people have shunned you for whatever reason, you keep going. You say, I'm going to be strong and I'll carry on even if I have to do it alone. That's what I did. I was often alone in prison and in the shoe. But I was never lonely. I was alone, but I was not lonely. Right now, on the street, if you guys only knew, I'm, I'm alone. I'm alone out here, but I'm not lonely. I believe in myself and I keep going. I keep pushing, knowing that the end is nigh and that eventually I'm going to reach my apex, my zenith. I believe in myself. And you guys need to do the same thing. When I got to Corcoran shoot, there was an unaliving. Within a week, more on that coming up.